In this video, we're going to look at essay style. Now, what is essay style? Well, essay style means the way you write an essay. So it's just the way that you use your language and that you set it all out in terms of what you write. It's the way you use language. The way you use language in an essay is very different from how you may write in other tasks. So if you get another type of English task, you'll be expected to write in a much different way than what you would in an essay. And in this lesson, we'll go through what you write and how you write in an essay. All right, so to start with, you need to use something called formal language. And formal language essentially just means proper English. So what is proper English? What are the rules of proper English? Well, to start with, it means that your grammar is always correct. Now, if you're struggling a little bit with grammar or you don't feel that confident, then it is important that you are able to at least try to write with correct grammar. All right, you're not going to be ripped to shreds for every grammatical error you make because let's face it, even the really, the really good English speakers still make some grammatical errors from time to time. But to have grammar that's always correct means that you try and use correct grammar as much as possible. You do not use contractions. So for instance, things like can't, they, or they'd, should I say, or shouldn't. Okay, so anything where you've got an apostrophe, which is cutting out a word, or a, sorry, a letter, you cut that out. That's another rule of formal language. The final rule is no expressions or colloquial language. So no phrases or things that you may hear just in conversation. For instance, on the other hand, it goes from bad to worse, so on and so forth. There are a number of expressions like that or pieces of colloquial language. Now, the reason why you can't use those sorts of expressions is because they don't mean everything to, or the same thing to everyone. If I was to say, on the other hand, to someone who hadn't spoken English very much, and they were talking about well, what does the other hand mean, then they're not really sure. So by writing in formal language, it means that you write in a way that anyone who can read it can understand it. It doesn't have to be someone who knows what the language is or knows the way that you talk with your friends or anything like that. It has to be like that. Move on to the next rule. So it's a rule, it's a tough thing to learn at first, but the main thing just to remember is that you just don't write like you're having a conversation. You just get all of the ideas straight on the page. You're not being clever, you're not doing anything else like that. Now, an essay needs to be impersonal. I'll explain what that is. An essay cannot have words like, for instance, I or me, so it can't be written by you. You can't say, I think this and I think that, or me, I would say this. No, you can't say that. Nor can you talk to your marker at all. We'll just say your teacher. You can't say you or your. All right, you're not speaking to them what we call directly. So you're not having a face-to-face -face conversation with them. You cannot use the word we, us, or our. This is what we mean by impersonal language. You can't use any of those words. It's not written by me. It's not talking to anyone. It's not talking about anyone in general. It doesn't use any of those pronouns. Yes, it can use details. For instance, you can say in Australia, but you wouldn't say we believe this because if, as I said, and again, we'll use this example, if someone was to read and not understand your situation, then they won't know what, who we is. What you say is not gonna make a lot of sense. That is why you need to use impersonal language in an essay. You should also not use words that show these things. One, feelings, as in how you feel. So you can't say this is a terrible thing to do or it is a terrible thing to do because that shows that like having an impersonal thought or using I or me or we, that you feel something about it. You have to remain what we call neutral, which means that you don't feel one way, you don't feel the other, you're right down in the middle. You don't have a side that you're picking. The same as comments. Now comments are about what you think. So I do not like this. Okay, usually a good way to know if you're making a comment is if you use the word I, because that will generally show that what it is is you making a comment because it's your opinion. But anything that seems like it's just your opinion and not something you can prove through fact, you need to cross out. So you need to cross out both of these things if you see them. Impersonal language works pretty much like this. You need to change what you write to make it look like it's not your opinion. What you're writing is you giving an answer, but it's not your opinion, okay? So I'll explain what I mean. I think it's important that we stop the horrible violence in schools. Okay, 
So to start with, let's just get rid of a few things which are my opinion, I think, okay? Straight away we can tell that's my opinion because I'm saying I think. I think it's important that we stop, yeah, that's fine. Well, we get need to get rid of we, sorry. And we need to stop horrible because again, that's a feeling word. We don't want to use that. It is important that stop the violence in schools. Okay, we need to fix that sentence up a little bit. So we've got here, violence needs to be stopped in Australian schools. All right, and this is a much better version than the one we've got there. So it's not got any personal opinion in it. It's just got the facts. Yes, it might still seem like, okay, well, you're using your opinion, but it's not doing it in terms of, I think this. It's saying that it just needs to be stopped. An essay also needs to be clear and simple. And it's the most important thing that you can have in an essay is that it's clear and simple. As in clear for someone to read and easy for them to understand. So everything that you write makes sense to anyone who reads it. So number one, you need to get rid of adjectives. They might be asking, why do I need to get rid of adjectives? Well, the reason why you need to get rid of adjectives is because they aren't needed. They are not needed. They don't give you any extra information. By having adjectives, for instance, this is amazing machine, it doesn't add anything to it because if you're writing a creative piece, yeah, sure, it's an amazing machine. But if you're writing an essay, this machine is fine. You don't need to write anything else. Two, you need to use something that we call specifics. Now, specifics means that you point what it is you're trying to say. I'll explain that. I'll use the example to explain. Something happens, that's a bad version. We wanna fix that, we wanna make it better. So we have the gears make it move. So this here is something happens, that's not talking about anything. If we're using specifics, we're talking about exactly what it is that gets the machine to work. In this case, it is the gears, that is our specific. The gears help it to move. If we know more information, then we give more information. If it's the gears uh, attach themselves to the gear box, which then move a part of the engine, then you're getting a little bit more specific. And the more specific you can be, the better. You really just point in, so if I was to point at that picture, or point in the direction of that picture, then you would point at what part of the machine makes it work, not just go, oh, well, it just moves around and all these things happen and it works. Because that's not really showing you know anything about it. And it's the same with this. If you're not using specifics, it means that you don't really know what it is you're talking about. And it shows. All right. So we'll cross all that out again. All right. Another thing your essay needs to be is on topic. As in, every paragraph of your essay should carry on with the same point you started that paragraph with. This essentially means on topic. I'll, I'll explain what this means. Turtles are creatures that live under the sea. Dogs live on the land. Turtles may go from the sea onto land to lay their eggs. They live in mostly shallow water. There's a problem here. You've got, suddenly got, for no reason, dogs. Why are they there? Well, let's just do the right thing there and cross them out because they're not needed. All right, so we're not jumping from one thing to the next. We've now got something where the entire paragraph is about turtles and more importantly, about where turtles live, as in under the sea, unless they go onto land to lay their eggs. But it's about where turtles live. This is acceptable. If you've got a random thing in there for no reason, then you need to cut it out, get rid of it. All right, might seem really obvious, but it's something that really need to do. The final feature of a essay is something which we call complex sentences. Now, for further details on complex sentences, where I'm gonna go through it very briefly here, is there'll be a video on complex sentences. So have a look at that, and that will give you more information. But in terms of what we're gonna look at, it just means that your sentence has two or more parts. It has a main idea, and it has a supporting detail or a detail that supports it. So let me explain. Humans need water as it is necessary for them to live and stay healthy. That's our sentence. It's a complex sentence. And the reason why we can tell it's a complex sentence is for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have a main idea right there, as in humans need water. We have a detail and we have another detail. Now, the great thing about this bit here is this can be a full stop. Humans need water, that's a full sentence. These things here, it is necessary for them to live and stay healthy are details which require this bit here to continue on working. So really what you should be doing is you should be stating a fact and then using your sentence to explain why it's true. So like that, so humans need water and why they need water? Because it's necessary for people to live 
and it helps people to stay healthy. All right, so in conclusion, what you need to do, and this is a checklist that you should follow. It's a very detailed checklist, and it's gonna take a long time to master this. Might be an idea to write it down, have it in the back of your head, so every time you write an essay, you make these checks. First of all, that you use correct grammar. There are no contractions. No apostrophes, don'ts, won'ts, shan'ts, the rest. No colloquial language, if you can. Sometimes you use it without realizing it, but if you can avoid it, avoid it. No I, you, or we. No feelings or comments. No adjectives. You need to be specific. You need to be on topic. And you need to use complex sentences. So have that written down, have that somewhere wherever your desk is or your study room at home, and have that as something that you check every time that you write an essay for any test that you do. Make sure you know what it is that all of these things mean, so you know exactly how to get rid of colloquial language or you know how to be specific, you know what to look for. So if you're writing something and you're not 100% sure, go through that list and that will help you a lot. Otherwise, until next time, I'll see you later.